Hades Reese thinks you yeah, Mount Olympus is by far one of the most aggressive wooden roller coasters and just roller coasters in general I have ever experienced and has by far one of the most unique layouts I have ever experienced on a roller coaster, period. So this will be my full in-depth review of Hades 360 at Mount Olympus Amusement Park in Wisconsin Delft. Now, with this being located, Mount this stands at a staggering height of 136 feet above the parking lot as it is right and directly as soon as you walk into the gate. So it is very impressive as you just walk over it and then walk right next to it, another coaster that intertwines with it, Zeus, right across the way from it. It has an impressive 65 degree angle descent which is pretty good for a wooden coaster and makes it a very bold statement at the front of the park which is something I really really like. It's the first thing as you come in well with the other three wood coasters but you know <laughs> it's kind of a unique sideline just to see all three tangled together and that's just what will be a common theme in the other th reviews I do of the other coasters. Overall it's just something really really cool and I really enjoy about it. But with that being said Hades 360 hasn't always been named Hades 360 as in when it opened in 2005 it was originally just called Hades and featured a slightly different layout. Originally, after you plunge into the underworld or underneath the parking lot, you would pop out on the other side where the now famous inversion is, but instead back then it just was a simple little air time that just curved around back over and popped down under the underworld once again. So, you know, it was a much needed change, but it was obviously a change that was different. So, and I think it's for the better as it, it did used to have a problem of valleying in that area. And uh, so it always improved that bit. And it's just overall made the ride a little more spicy, if you get what I'm saying. However, we will come back to the valleying part of the video a little bit later, as I got some things I want to say about that. Also, when Hades was just Hades, it actually featured it instead of trains as well, as they used to feature a set of PTC trains, where just their your standard wooden coaster style trains. You know, they were two seaters, four per car, that kind of thing. You know. But obviously when they redid the ride, they decided to give it a new fresh set of trains called the Timberliner, which you can find these on other wooden coasters they've done, such as Kentucky Flyer, Kentucky King, and that kind of thing, which they allow for more airtime and is less constricted, which I really like. However, this is the only one of that style that features seat belts, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section, but I believe it is. So it's kind of a little strange, but I don't mind it as it doesn't really bother at all. It just doesn't hurt anything. It's non-restrictive and that kind of thing, so I don't mind it. Hayes, in my opinion, though, features a very strong layout, with half of it actually being before you even get to the lift hill. So I think it's a very cool feature. But the only way you can do that as it, its station is raised up slightly, which is what you can find with all the roller coasters here, which is a little bit strange because as you got to walk upstairs and to get to the ride, it. But I don't mind it at all because I think it adds an extra cool bit of character to the ride, makes it different from the other wooden coasters you can find all across the globe. And I actually really, really like it. But just a kind of little slight thing. And it actually allows for a good bit of airtime, as that pre-lift section has some good amount of airtime, some tw twists and turns that actually pull a good amount of lateral forces. And even the, the airtime scale aren't that strong, I still appreciate them for being there because it's better than nothing, obviously. So I think it's a really cool fact, and it's just before the lift hill, obviously. So, you know, you're just getting started with it, and then you have a whole other half of it after the lift hill. So, you know, that's a big win in my opinion. What's also good about this ride though is that you do not lose speed until you get to the very end of the ride, like as you're going into the brake rut, which I don't really mind too much because as you've already experienced the rest of the ride, you're just trying to get back to the brakes. Unlike mo other wooden coasters that would just lose your speed halfway through the ride and you're like, oh, this is kind of, it's just kind of sluggish, you know, it just kind of meanders around, does this little dippity doo dahs throughout the rest of the ride, which I don't have a problem with this. And I think this ride does speed and all that kind of stuff very well. But however, in terms of aggressiveness, I wouldn't say it's all this necessary because it's an aggressive ride, like a steel vengeance or something like that. I think it partially comes from the fact that it is not very smooth. I mean, even the park themselves has a sign or billboard kind of thing that's on the ride that says, Hades 360 is running very aggressive today. So, you know, if even the park is telling you that, that means you're in for something. But I'm not sure what it is because, like, it is rough. Don't get me wrong. It is not the smoothest wooden coaster there is, but I don't know what if I can really call it rough or anything. It just kind of feels strange. It's like, to me, it seems like the track profiling is as good as you're going to get. And it should be spot on. But I think it has something to do with how the trains ride the track. And I'm not sure really where the exert like where the limits of that go, but I'm not going to dive too much into that because I don't know whether it has something to do with their Mount Olympus uh, maintenance team or whatever that because they are not known for being the safest uh, park out there. So, you know, we, we won't get too much into that because I don't know the statistics behind it. Maybe you do. Post it down in the comments if that makes any sense at all. But personally, though, I really don't mind the roughness at all just because I feel like it adds some character to the ride 
like similar to like how people loved how that the beach is a little more rough and not as smooth because it was very much before its time. So, you know, I really don't mind it at all. And personally, I think it makes some of the rest of the ride a little more extreme. You know, it's like some of the elements you'll go through, like the, the couple of double downs you go through. I feel like it makes them a little more insane. Even though the airtime, I don't think is as strong as some others. Which, like I've been saying it throughout the entire video, I don't mind it at all. It's because I feel like the ride itself is more directed towards, like, the lateral forces you get as you go around the certain curves. But that's just me. Because, like, for example, during towards the middle of the ride, where you actually come out of the inversion, you go into a 110 degree overbank turn. So, I think you get a ton of forces going to that, even though you get carrying a lot of speed through it. So, I guess that makes up for some of it as well. But I think the roughness makes it even more extreme. However, you gotta be careful though, because just be how, how you enter into that turn though, uh, where the catwalk start up again, you can almost touch it with your hand if you're tall enough. And I really wish you do not do that, okay? <laughs> we almost had that happen to us once before on Hades, but it actually has happened to us on a, uh, the beast at King's Island. We were just riding along, you know, in the final helix, they have like a turn and you got the tunnels, obviously. And uh, I actually smacked my hand against the corner because I'm a bit taller guy. I'm about five foot ten, almost six foot. So you know, it's not a fun time. So I just make recommend when you're going into that to kind of just kind of duck your hands down just a little bit, or unless you're a daredevil and you decide to just you know, hey, whoa, go after it and just and smacks your hand to the pole. But hey, that's just my warning to you because it is very painful. I'll just put it that way. With that being said though, what really does off put me a bit is the operation because they are a little strange for this ride. So in order for them to send out the train, they have to have the ride at 100% full. That's because back when it used to be Hades, it had a balloting issue. But here's the problem. When Gravity Group came back in and redid that little end bit there, or the middle bit, whichever one you want to call it, that balloting issue was removed. But why do they still do this? I don't know, honestly. It's kind of strange because you'd be waiting for five minutes to 20 minutes just to get the train fold up and then you know you just go around to the course and what's even worse is the fact they only have the one train because they don't have another set of block breaks there just to do it because you see how block breaks work is that they will I allow for one train to be in the station and then for every other one that's open it allows for another train to be on it and they only have the one set of block breaks so it's kind of a little strange and even that how you even get into the block breaks is a little strange because as you go towards the end of the ride, you have like this little final helix that you go to, which provides some good forces nonetheless. But then you kind of start to lose your speed, and then you hit your brakes, which is actually elevated even higher above the station. So it's a little strange. And that's, well, that, that's not just for Hades either. That's for their other two woodies there up in the main front, uh, Zeus and Cyclops. So it's a little strange, and they did that for all of them. I don't know why. They must really love their elevated uh, brake runs, I guess, you know? Which, don't get me wrong, I don't think it hurts the ride as a whole very much. It's just kind of a downside. Because it feels like they, when they redid it, they could have at least extended it out just a little bit more. Which they did add track onto the already 40,700 feet or so of the track. So, you know, they already added a couple more feet to it. So, they could have added in another block break section just to allow for a more uh, efficient style coaster. Because it's just not very efficient. And it makes me very unfortunate because you can't get as many rides in even though... When we went there, it was completely dead, and we got plenty of rides on it. We got 10 on it that day, so I have a very good experience with it. We got two in the front, like five in the back, and we did, it's kind of a little bit everywhere in the middle. So, you know, we got a little bit of everywhere. So And obviously, I'm going to say this is more of a back road ride, as you do have the airtime. And you do actually get the stronger laterals, I think, back there, as you're just getting yanked around everywhere. And especially when you get to the top of Hades Lift Hill, you just get absolutely yanked over the top, which is something I actually find really amazing. Now, I also forgot to mention that underneath the tunnel, where they redid, actually redid that a little bit as well, is where now they just have a bit of a straight section down there, but now it's just kinda, it just kind of has like a couple hops, a little more turny banked and that kind of stuff, banks your side to side. So I think you don't see anything, you're just kind of going up and down and all around. It's kind of amazing. It's, kind of, it's amazing. It's probably the best, best thing I've ever had. They have to ride the beat again at night just to. Clarify that because that is a very high hitter in terms of tunnels and just night rides in general. But you know, yeah, with that being said, I think everything this ride does is amazing. I think it has a nice length, good elements, a strange setup with the brake run, that kind of stuff. But I think it's kind of quirky and I like it. So, with that being said, I find the ride really enjoyable and I feel like it, it's highly recommendable to go out and visit Mount Olympus. Just like I said, be warned that it is not for everyone.